these are people who are in some cases they had a Christian background, but some of these people are have dis are discovering Christianity for the first time. It's brand new. Um, they're outside of the Christian industry. They're outside of the church. They're not Christian celebrities. Uh, it's not, you know, the religious right sees themselves as prophetic often where they are representing the nation to God and God to the nation. And they're, they're fulfilling this role that they see the prophets functioning in uh, like uh, uh, Daniel or, you know, um, rebuilding the wall, Nehemiah. But th those don't, that doesn't describe these people. Like these people don't have any connection to uh, larger Christianity in the United States. And I, I just think that's interesting. I don't know completely what to make of that, but I, I, I think at the very least, what it says is that uh, there's a principle in scripture that God will use the weak things to shame the strong. He also resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And I'm very hopeful that God may be using weak things, things we don't expect. Uh, Russell Brand, I, I last time I heard Russell Brand, he was arguing with Peter Hitchens about legalizing marijuana, I think, yeah. and other substances. Now he's on Tucker praying beautiful prayers, and no one gets credit for that in the church. I think that's the wonderful thing. No, no, uh, none of the Pharisaical characters and none of uh, the, the Christian industry types can actually take credit for Russell Brand. Only God can take credit for Russell Brand, and I think that's the way he likes to uh, to work. Yeah, that, that's powerful in a lot of ways. I, I want to so uh, I want to break that out in, in a couple pieces there because uh, I think it's important. You know, there's um, Alexander Dugan has a phrase that is, has haunted my mind since I read it, which was uh, based to, to, uh, to paraphrase it badly. You know, modernity was about the death of God, but post modernity is about the death of who, you know, the, the people have been so apart from God for so long that they've even forgotten to be angry at God anymore. Right. Like if, if the, if the, you know, if kind of modernity was the rebellion against God and saying, we don't need him anymore. We'll, we'll make ourselves, we'll remake ourselves in our own image. We'll completely abandon spiritual traditions. We can be a completely materialist man. At the end of that, the postmodern is, is almost a moment of we, we've forgotten even what we were rebelling against, right? Like this entire, this, you know, this entire, a uh, couple hundred years of rebellion against God has itself almost, you know, the, the spirit of that has, has died. That zeitgeist has died. And so you're in this moment where there are all these people, as you say, who are completely divorced from the church, have, have never been Christians, have no family that are Christians, have never, all they know is that it wasn't cool to be a Christian, that you were supposed to sneer at it, but they've never read the Bible. They've never really heard anything about it. They're completely uh, ignorant of the actual tradition. And so when they come to it, um, like you said, it, it's it's through fresh eyes because they 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 don't even know what they're supposed to hate uh, if they if they know it at all, and it's from outside of this kind of uh, architecture of uh, you know larger Christianity, larger denominations, or some of these things in many cases. And so you have this moment where uh, all of these Christian leaders, and you you've written books about this. Megan Bashman just had a, a book that came out about this. But so many, especially in kind of the Protestant evangelical world, have been racing as fast as possible to become like these TED Talk pastors, right? To yeah. just become the, the, these leaders that are elevated, not really because they are on fire for the Lord or because they're deeply spiritual, but because they've accumulated enough managerial experience to be honored by uh, kind of the, the, the current uh, paradigm. And so... You have all these leaders who have invested themselves in moving the church and its architecture and its institutions towards kind of really this progressive secular humanism and all of its beliefs. And they can't, like you said, they can't claim any of this because the people coming are, are so, you know, so disconnected. They're, they're so not involved that the revival is happening in many ways outside of the church infrastructure that should be facilitating in the first place. Yeah, when I went to seminary, I remember this wasn't implicitly uh, told us that I can remember, but it was implied. It was in the water. You just you, this is just the way things were done. When you wanted to plan a church or even go to a church, let's say for a revitalization project, that's a huge thing right now because we have a shortage of pastors and there's a lot of older congregations that that are aging and uh, and they want to know how how do we tap back into the community and get young people to come and that kind of thing. So you're basically taught through example and, and other ways, I suppose, too, that you need to ensure that whatever you do should not look like a church. So 
Um, I remember in Wake Forest where uh, I, I went to school at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, which is a Southern Baptist school. In that area, there were several startup churches, church plants, which seemed unnecessary to me because there's just so many churches, but everyone wanted to have their little niche and it was all branding, right? So you would go to um, a, a church that's name wouldn't even signify, you would never know it was a church unless- Haven, you, the Cove. You liquid, know, like, uh, yeah, the, the Way or whatever. It's, it's uh, there, There's a one near me, uh, it was called the River Church. And then I remember a few- years ago, someone told me that's just the river now. I'm like, well, isn't, is it a, still a church? Like there's not water running through it, right? No, it's a, it is a church. We, we just dropped the church and that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. In every way, we don't want to look like a church. Our architecture should look like a strip mall. Um, you know, there's, there's a church I know of called cross point. You know what they don't have at that church A cross. Uh, it's, it, it's the corporate logo stuff. It, we don't want cemeteries that would remind people of death and that's bad. And so um, the music, I think, is more self-focused. It's entertainment driven. Every, everything you just described about like the skinny jeans pastors and that kind of thing. And this is the road that Christians have been going on, evangelicals in particular, for, I don't know now, I mean, uh, 20, 30 years too. I mean, as the religious right has existed, so has beside it this um, method of trying to attract people who are alienated for, from church by convincing them that uh, they're not a church. But the thing that's happening right now with all these conversions we're talking about, and, and there's others, actually, I'd like to talk about Jordan Peterson a little. He's more complicated, but for even sure. with him, all of them, it seems to me, are looking for traditional churches. They don't want a strip mall that gives you a TED Talk. They actually want a church. They want it to look like a church, sound like a church. They don't care if it's influential, if it's big. That's a really refreshing thing to me, because I think that we have to get back to uh, what makes a church a church for us to stand out. If we don't stand out, there's no reason to come. You can be an activist in the Democratic Party. You don't need to join a church to do that, right? You can go see a therapist if you want self-help advice. You don't need to see a pastor for that. But if we are going to be a church that orients ourselves to the divine, to, to a higher mode of living, uh, to the eternal realm, then we're going to have to point to the eternal realm with our symbols, with our architecture, with our music, with the way we dress, with the, what we preach. All of it needs to go back to what it was before, which was pointing people up instead of pointing people to themselves. And I think that uh, these celebrity conversions are, uh, whether it's in, they interpret it this way or not, because they're seeking that, I think, this is a referendum on the seeker sensitive movement.